have sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, it's Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. Got an awesome review finally with a tier 9 Giuseppe Verde. I hope that I pronounced that correctly. With full sap secondary build because I experienced this hate myself. But before we begin, if you see any value in this video, like, subscribe, bell button below. Appreciate all the support. On our way to 2,000 subscribers, premium DD giveaway uh, at 2,000. But before we begin, look at the sap secondary stats here. Uh, the angles are great. So if you want to get all the sap secondaries uh, on target, you got to give them 40 degrees of uh, broadside angle if you want to call it that see right there the back gun uh, 20 degrees is fine but the back mini gun that it's a little bit small caliber 100 millimeter i believe uh let me double check that i don't know if it's 100 millimeter yeah, right there 90 millimeter 40 degrees you got to give in order to get that back turret there and but it's got the third highest secondary dpm which made me really wonder is this ship a viable secondary ship? So we're going to take a look at it today in the review. Um, just looking at this right now. Now, the strategy that the Giuseppe Verde really allow or warrants is really the using the smoke, crawling smoke to get into secondary range. So that's normally what the play style is, where you're driving into a cap or an objective, and then as soon as you get spotted, boom, you pop the smoke, which lasts about 50 or so seconds, which is kind of fairly and long enough for you to get within maybe decent range, even with these ships that are kiting away. And again, this is just rank battle. I'm not sure how this would work maybe in the randoms with CV subs and, and whatnot, but right now it seems to be working well with the rank season uh, and maybe small little battles without CV subs or radar cruisers. But right now you can see just the pushing ability of this thing is pretty darn strong. And this is the Italian battleship line. And I was like looking at the Napoli. It's like, wow, the Napoli's like a tank. I wonder if the Giuseppe Verdi does the same thing. And I've noticed the armor structure does support a lot of it, as you can see right now. Not getting inside the, the technical mechanics of it, but if you angle properly, just look how much damage we can actually tank. Look, we took a shot right there. Look, they're bouncing a lot of the shells off and mitigating a lot of the damage. While we get the sap secondaries are firing, 10 and a half uh, kilometer is the range of the sap secondaries. Not the most desirable. Desirable. I would rather have them go out to maybe at least 11.3, like the Massachusetts American line, maybe 12, like they do in the German secondaries. But I, didn't, I digress. That's not what this ship was designed for. But I wanted to see if these really work. The SAP secondaries seem to be very, very strong and powerful and a viable option. And and look at this. We're also going to see the 406 millimeter guns. I just took a shot and boom, look at that. Nice Citadel action right there going on the Heisen. And they're just 406 millimeter guns, kind of like I just look at this and compare it to maybe the Massachusetts or the Montana style guns. I mean, you have some pretty big darn guns right there, which do the job. But I really wanted to focus on the SAP secondaries to see if these actually are a viable pushing option for a lot of you that are wondering, is this something that's pretty cool? And I saw it because look at the rain of shells that are constantly coming down. And now, again, this guy's angling. The Heisen is angling, so it does deflect a lot of those shells. So the angles are not as optimal. I mean, you really have to give um, some, some angle to these shells. Because because again, they, it's still a shell. It still deflects if you angle properly. Now we're, here's an example going against the, a black, a, a destroyer, and to see do these sap secondaries yeah, melt destroyers? And I've noticed that maybe yes, uh, they can. Uh, you don't really get as many hits on target because if you do the math, you're probably getting of course, the hitting DPM is about uh, what is it, seventy-seven thousand ish. Uh, the hitting DPM is, yeah, about 77,000. You do the math, divide it by, you know, 500,000 plus this. You're really going to maybe getting less than a fifth of the shells on target. And then the math does show it. But look, we do get a hit after that many shells being shot at it. And it, it, again, and here's another example of us pushing in with the smoke, the crawling smoke, right? And we're going to see how the SAP secondaries do against destroyers, cruisers, battleships, and so forth. And we just want to see, I mean, does the DPM and the mass support it? And I've noticed that it does seem to. Uh, about a fifth of the shells will hit and actually cause some kind of significant damage to warrant the reason for the push. And here's our counterpart right here. I, I consider this kind of a, a good brawling session where the tier 9 rubric and we're going to oh, here's the Groningen right here popping out of the smoke because we get within range. Somebody's using hydro or something or you spotted. Rupric's in the distance, so we're not going to play with him right off that. We're getting shot at from too many angles, so we're going to do a go ahead and get full broadside to get the hell out of here. But look at the amount of seconds they're firing, and boom, look at that. We get a kill on the Groningen, so these do melt. DD's at significant close range if you get, uh, I would say, enough firepower and angle enough to get all the guns to bear and see if you can maximize the math. 
so they can get the maximum amount of shells on target. So again, increases your chances of hits. Now here's a good shot right here against the, our counterpart, Marco Polo. So another uh, battleship uh, Italian line. And let's see if our secondaries can actually wither away this thing down. And notice the angling I'm giving. This is about 30 degrees-ish. Uh, you can see that back turret is firing. So we are getting the optimal angle right here. And this is kind of, will is this angle uh, able to deflect a lot of shells? And yep, it, it, it still t we still take some damage. I mean, 7,000 off right there if you aim the superstructure. Good aim does support it. Uh, but man, it, it it doesn't. I wouldn't say this is a good tanky battleship. It can if if you angle just pure like I'm doing right now. I'm just sacrificing the sap shells for pure angle and see if I can mitigate the damage because we don't want to take any more. Uh, I mean that's that's that in a nutshell right there. But here's another example of taking on a DD again. We had to push him right into his smoke and look at that boom. We take the front guns, take half his uh, DPM or HP down, and now we're gonna see the sap secondaries how they go to work on this destroyer. And yeah, you notice it, it does support a little bit, but again, this is a little wonky dispersion, a lot of wonky shells, 1.0 Sigma. Again, it's not the greatest, but it does the job at those closest of a distance. I mean, what secondary wouldn't? I would. I wish it was a little bit more accurate. Here's an example going against a cruiser. I, again, these, these things penetrate up to 26 to 40-ish millimeters of armor, so I think it's a sweet spot of destroyers and cruisers. Battleship superstructures are another, and if the battleship is showing le like 32 millimeters or less, then maybe the back guns can take a little bit more um, off, but again... Now, look at this. Even shooting at a distance like this, about, what, 8.3 kilometers, yeah, you, it's wonky hit or miss, but we get a lot of those 4 or 6 millimeter guns. Now, here's a great example of brawling right here. I love brawling, and this is a good example of how we can use the Giuseppe Verde against it. Now, this is a battleship that is uh, another, was it Naruto? Naguto? I can't pronounce that for some reason. Anyways, uh, the battleship is going to angle away from us, and we're going to angle against him. And we're going to see if these half secondaries actually melt. And I've noticed the Japanese battleships really suffer in the armor department uh, against these sap secondaries. Because you're going to notice, watch it every time you, the sap secondaries shoot, and you're going to see ooh, a lot of damage right there, about 1,000 sometimes. You get about 1,300. I mean, if this thing was able to shoot that fast and get the shells on target, and look at it, just melting away, I mean, it, it is a viable option at the, for against Japanese battleships, maybe something lower armored. And I, w I would think that. You know, optimal angles are here. We go. We're getting shot from a Naguto in the distance. We're getting shot from right here on the right. We're getting shot from an Iowa on the left. So, look, it can tank. Uh, again, you just cannot sit here. I'm just wishing it was fire a bit faster. And I noticed that the little 90 millimeter guns are triple barrel. So every time they shoot, they're shooting three shells out, which is really cool. Uh, I wish more seconders are like that, where you're just shooting constant barrages of triple uh, shots right there. But I noticed that when I was fighting against the Giuseppe Verde, it's like, why are all these sap shells? Look at that. Good kill right there, right there. It's it's viable. I was noticing when I was getting shot out by Giuseppe Verde, I was like, man, where are all these sap secondaries coming from? It looked like a rain. I almost crowded out my screen. And you'll probably get a good shot of it, what it looks like on the back end of this, because look, this is what's happening. You you if you angle up to 30 degrees here and get every single gun on target, you got the AR acting AR uh, adrenaline rush activated, and you're reducing the reload times really really down to maybe almost one and a half to two seconds. Look at how many shells are actually going down. We melt this guy down. I mean, he's at 50,000 ish health right now, right? Now watch what these sap secondaries and the main guns can do together in conjunction. Uh, with proper angling and everything and just wish the I wouldn't get flanked here on the left But there's nothing more I can do my whole flank is caved in but let's see how many people we can take down I mean look here. He's down to 30,000 34,000. I think he's got a heal pop Yeah, I don't uh, know. Nope, yeah, he is not he is not uh, healing right now. So this is a ex, a, a Great well, moment to actually tackle Look, We're getting broadsided now had that Iowa not been there We probably could have taken this Nagato as well Nagato is that how you pronounce it? Negato as well. But look at this. We're melting him down to 17,000 health. Let's see. He's got the heal popping right now. Look at all those shells firing now. Look at the reload rate on this. If you get it down to Adrenaline Rush, this thing is a monster. Um, if you really get the reloads down to this uh, insane level. And look at this. We are melting him from 50,000 all the way down to almost 4 to 3k. If we did not have that other battleship on our left, I think we could have taken him one-on-one. -on -one. But again, what do you guys think? Comment below. Is, is this a viable build option? But here's the example of what the 4 or 6 millimeter guns can do. Uh, again, I like them. They're just kind of like Massachusetts guns. You kind of just aim at the horizon there. or I'm sorry, sit, or waterline and boom. Look at that. Splash one. Good citadel hits. And now, look, we're going to go against the Schlieffen. Actually, the, I would say the mother... Uh, it's actually still ranked as number one in the secondary department. I think the Schlieffen is a viable secondary ship. I love it. It's one of the best. 
Uh, but let's see how the Giuseppe Verde does against it. Uh, I, don't, I don't. I really think it's going to lose one on one with against the Schlieffen. But uh, if you get it low enough, and you saw the sap secondaries in the previous clip right there, you could see that man. If, if this thing can get on a roll and, and just get all those guns just clicking and clacking right off the bat, and they, they really can take off a lot of health. And that's why the controversy of sap shells is it just negates armor and or sorry negates angling and just is getting all these nice juicy hits and everything. Now look, we're just withering away this Schlieffen down. Now we're gonna have to watch for the torpedo, so we're gonna go ahead and angle in. I have to sacrifice se secondary shooting right now, but we still see you got a couple shooting in the front, and they are taking some damage. So still a good option for pushing. We're almost dead right here, but look at this. Our guns are reloading in five seconds. The secondaries of this Schlieffen is not doing its job. He should have melted us by now. So showing our armor, and boom! Look at that sit on the back tail right there, and we take him down. And we that was a good trade right there, taking down the Schlieffen. Uh, here's uh, what would look like the tactic that we're using right here for the Giuseppe Verde, where you push into a cap, you pop smoke. If you're getting spotted by DD, hopefully no red are in the area, and you're really just providing fire support for your other DDs just by being able to be undetected, having the sap secondary shoot. Again, s secondaries don't pop up if you're in smoke. If you understand that mechanic right there, use it for your best advantage. A lot of Schlieffelin players, a lot of uh, secondary ships focus on that, where you stay in smoke, don't fire your main guns, because as soon as you fire, you become detected because there's a penalty for that, but secondaries do not have a penalty. So now that we ran out of smoke, we're gonna see how can we go against this uh, Siegfried and see what kind of man if we didn't take those torpedoes I think we could have survived this a little bit better but anyways look at all the seconders firing right there now again this is showing how the Siegfried armor is deflecting a lot of those shells I would say the 90 millimeter turrets are not really getting enough on target but I would say the back the the, the bigger guns the 150 ish millimeter sap secondaries are getting a majority of the damage and you can see right there a lot of them are making contact right there but again the armor may be just too uh, armored or heavy for the 90 millimeters to penetrate you're just seeing a fireworks show at this point but if they do hit the superstructure you can see in it it they do take a little bit of chunks here at a time again i call it death by a thousand paper cuts so they again they could be an option if uh, you get enough on target or on the superstructure and if you're angled in you can survive the initial onslaught but I digress. Hey, uh, if you guys any, find any value in this, let me know. What do you think of the SAP secondaries? Is it a viable option for the Giuseppe Verde? Like, subscribe, bell button below. On our way to 2,000 subscribers. Appreciate all the support. But yeah, Giuseppe Verde in a nutshell. I think it's a great ship. Definitely worth getting. I recommend it. I think the SAP secondaries are really fun. I like the pushing. I like the brawling capability of it. Uh, again, it is not the strongest at Tier 9. with against going in Tier 10 and 11, but it is fun and ranked this season for Tier 9. So I definitely re uh, recommend it. It's doubloons, so... Just be uh, cautious of that. You might have to spend some money. But again, here is the build of what I did with Giuseppe Verde. Uh, I have a only a 20-point commander. But again, if I wanted to build a full, I would do the uh, fire prevention at the end. But you can see it's a secondary focus with minimizing damage and minimizing that burning rate with concealment. Concealment's not the greatest. You're out to 13 and a half-ish, maybe 14 out there if you didn't build for it. So you're going to get spotted right away, but that's where the smoke comes in. Here's a commander build. Now, again, like I said, I would build for the fire prevention at the very end there. But really, this build was the recommended build where you have the secondary focus, adrenaline rush, torpedo acquisitions, and the damage con and concealment. Again, once I go rank up to the final 21-point commander, I'm going to get fire prevention to uh, mitigate that damage. Or I could probably take maybe reduced damage control. But let me know what you guys think. Stay safe. Cheers.